And I'll tell you guys since we're, since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to The Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 133. In this episode, we will be discussing the first ever Grishaverse graphic novel, Demon in the Wood. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry from Nashville, Tennessee. This is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by the one, the only, Lee Bardugo. Moi sabiani, casters. Hi. Hey, <laughs> what up? I can't with you. Oh, you can. So, we know it's November. Yeah. But since we didn't do all of October, we still had a couple of costumes. Of course, we did one last week with Lee, which we'll get to in a second. But right now, we need to talk about this Eric situation. (laughs) I am, I'm feeling it. I I, mean, like, can't tell you nothing, because this is amazing. (laughs) Well... So I had so much fun with this. Um, I am Sankt Lucan. So for those of you that know your Grisha verse well, I am that head on a platter that's from Lives of Saints. I mean, go look it up and then go to YouTube because this is probably the best costume in like (laughs) Grisha cast history. I don't know. Okay, so please do also check out the book because I was I really wanted the details, and it just kind of looks like I've got this plate behind me for no reason. But if you look at the picture, he has a ring behind him. But anyways, I'm a head on a platter, and yeah, we we really went and had some fun with us. So we will make sure to take a picture of this mm-hmm. um, because it. Chris did an amazing job. Go producer. Whoop, whoop. Just like, saying. I lost it when I came in. <laughs> well, when you came in, I probably looked insane because you saw me in my my green screen Yeah, suit. but then when I looked at the monitor, it was like, oh, my goodness. It's literally amazing. Well, I'm glad you, you enjoy it. And... You look incredible. Uh huh. Harsha. <laughs> Harsha. Bringing on some on cat. On cat hanging out up here. Oh, there's a lot of hanging going <laughs> there on in is this. There's a lot of hanging. <laughs> we got me just on a platter, a couple feet above my laptop. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I just, I'm, I'm, a, you know, we just positioned me right near the mic and I'm floating also. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it is amazing. It is <laughs> the greatest thing that's ever happened. I, um, uh, well, this has been fun. Bye. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. No, like, if you've never gone to YouTube before to check us out, like, this is the time. Like, you really have to see this. It is, like, <laughs> a modern marvel. <laughs> well, it is something. It, it, it def- is definitely something. Yes, it is. And we just have fun, you know? I mean, Grishaversary Month, it tends to spill over into other months. I think we've done this yeah, before. Because some, it, like things always happen in October for us for some reason. They do. Like, why is October? Like, it should be our month. But, like, things always go south in October. I think the only time we've ever actually done it all the way through is when we first did it. Yeah, it's Our, like the very first one. Yeah. But at least we 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 stay committed. Mhm. Hey, I mean, if we can only get a couple in October, then don't worry, they're coming in November. Well, typically because we bought the costumes and we're like that too. we will use them. <laughs> yes. Agreed. It's <laughs> it's very hard to reuse some Grisha uh-huh. versus cosplay costumes. Yeah. Um, isn't rude, for instance. I don't know what I would use that no. for, um, except for isn't rude. And, um, yeah, and this, I mean, this will never happen again. I mean, it's amazing. 
Well, we are having some fun up in here. Yeah. We are all up in our gig. I mean, it's a, it's kind of fun now, though, because, like, uh, my youngest, he had decided last minute he wanted to go trick-or-treating. He was like, no, I don't want to. And then he was like, oh, I want to. But then I had so many things to go digging through because we've had <laughs> so many years of just collecting random things. So he got to, like, shuffle through things. So it's it comes in handy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it definitely does. And because there are parts of last week's costume that I was able to go into the Halloween buckets of mm-hmm. costumes and find some stuff. So, yeah, you, you do find ways to be able to reuse yeah. stuff. You've got to. So, I mean, I'm going to wear this blue velvet cape, like, every day. I I love it. <laughs> it's just going to be, like, a winter staple. I love your hair. It's the red just, like, poking out. It's cute. Thanks. And, it, yeah. I mean, this is definitely. It was recycled, too. Do you remember from what? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, Nikolai? Yes. <laughs> yep. It's the only boy wig I have. Oh. Yeah. Well, this wig got cut, (laughs) and I am not a hairstylist, so... No, it's perfect. Yeah. No one would ever know. No. Mm Mm-mm. I would hope. (laughs) Girl, if some of the girls from play saw me right now, they would be like, your wig is... Busted. Busted. Sorry. Thirsty. That's... um, I mean, it's fine. It is. Yeah. You're a saint that's, like, headless. So, I mean, what do you expect? You know what's really driving me a little crazy is the um, facial hair that I've attached. Um, <laughs> that. And the fact that I feel like I can't move. It's a little itchy. It's a little itchy. And also, <laughs> um, my little crown thing, It during our little rehearsal, it fell off. So, uh-huh. I have been um, instructed not to move. Yep, no moving for you. Yeah. So, I... I hope you understand, Harry. That's why I'm not turning my head a lot to look at you. Are you you jealous? Oh, my God. Stop it. (laughs) She is just, Uh, for those of you. I was moving and grooving. She was. And I'm just sitting on a plate. Yep. Sitting Uh, on a platter. Sitting on a platter. Okay. So, last week was freaking amazing. Yes. And I doubt there's any listeners right now that are listening to this that have not. If there are. Oh, right. You have got to stop this. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And listen to last week's. And then come back, though. Yes. Like, you have to come back. Lee was incredible. Mm-hmm. She was so nice and so fun. And, and the s- time goes by so fast. Yes, it did. It was... And she, like, spilled so much tea. Like, she gave us news. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It was amazing. We got so much information, and I thought it was really so cool for her to, like, just feel so comfortable to mm-hmm. do that. And, ugh, what an amazing. Like, I'm just going to give you some information. And it was, like, I think there was probably several points where both of us just kind of sat there, like, really? Okay. So, there are... I re-listened to it for the first time, and you and I get dumbfounded. (laughs) And when we get dumbfounded, (laughs) there's this long pause, and it's like, I wonder what she was thinking, (laughs) because we just, we, like, I mean, we literally couldn't speak. We didn't know what to say at some of the stuff. One part, you were so funny. You're like, that was deep. (laughs) (laughs) I... It was hilarious. Oh, no. I have to go back and listen to it because I blacked out. Same here. Like, I had so much fun, and I was, like, talking to her and everything, but, like, I mean, there was so many things that she told us, and then, I don't know, it just, it went by so fast. Yeah, and... It's just when you meet, Lee is incredible, and we lo- and we love her, and we've had the incredible opportunity to be able to speak to her and interview her on this podcast now twice, and it's so amazing. And I feel like I could talk to her for, like, so many hours. Like, there's so many discussions that need to be had, so many yes. things that need to be said. 
so much. And it was so difficult to just like narrow it down and move on. <laughs> it is it's very hard because we get a time frame mm-hmm. and it's yeah. It's difficult, but we did a great job. We got through it, and she gave us so much information, even though we wanted so much more. Um, Mm -hmm. But, hey, that just means she'll come back. Yeah. And she's awesome. And you know what? It's really rewarding to know that she had a good time because she commented back to us through our Instagram, and that is so – it's nice. And she said she had a hoot. A hoot. is, Is exactly what she said. And, um, it's a very Lee thing to say. It is. A hoot. Yeah. And I really hope that she sees this picture that we're going to put on I Instagram. Because I really want her to. Like, ugh, I hope so. It's amazing. Well, we get, we're get we doing it for you, girl. <laughs> it's all for you. It is. So. I feel like I have a hair. Uh-oh. Well, don't ask me to see. <laughs> okay. I got it. Good. All good. Okay. (laughs) So let's just get on into this. Like, we're just going to like discuss it. Yeah. We're just going to talk about it. And it's exciting because we haven't, we were supposed to cover the graphic novel before we interviewed Lee. Mm -hmm. However, we just, it didn't work out that way. So we're doing it now. Mm -hmm. Um, and, I was so excited when I got this. Um, so let's maybe let's discuss first impressions, first thoughts when you first got this into your hands. Like, what did you think? Purple. <laughs> Purple. Yeah, when I first like had it, like when I first like opened the box, I was like, "There's so much purple." Yes. And then it made me remember um, what we talked about with was it. Um, Language of Thorns. Are you talking about Aaron Stein? Yeah. Okay. About like all the, like the meanings of like the only using two. Oh, two co- yeah, colors. Yeah. Stuff that goes into it. And uh, so like, because we spilt, she got, we got the tea from her about like colors that it made me like look at like this differently. Yeah. Um, But then the inside is like, there's a lot of color for a while. But then when we get to, like, certain points, it turns back purple again. Like, there's literally just, like, yes, purple. So, yeah, I don't know. It's ama- Well, I think it's really amazing. The artist, mm-hmm. um, it's Danny Pendergast. Is that right? Dan- Pendergast. Pendergast. She, I, she did an incredible job. Yeah. And especially... With some of the graphics, like, I mean, and we'll get into it. I don't want to spill that right now because I should, we should just, yeah. Um, but starting in the very beginning, um, one thing that I thought was really cool, of course, um, is that, um, so one thing that's neat. Sorry, my head fell off. <laughs> Your crown. My crown did fall. I'm sorry, everybody. It's all right. You can fix it. I got 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 it. Here we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Crisis averted. Everything's okay. So, um, as I was saying before that crisis happened, (laughs) God, our poor listeners, they're like definitely impressed. Like (laughs) what is going on? That's Um, why you got to watch YouTube. Yeah. So in the beginning of every Grishaverse novel, we always have the Grisha order list page you know and i love that and i was interested to see what they would do with this and they didn't have that however they were really creative by making the very beginning part of the story a father i feel like talking to his family about the grisha and it like yeah it's just, it's neat. and It's kind of like those random chapters we get at the beginning of the novels. Yes. Where, like, we never see those people ever again. Yep. <laughs> but it just kind of sets the tone. The images in the very beginning, like, the art is beautiful. Mm-hmm. I love 
seeing just all of it where it says the tide makers who control the seas, the squalors, the winds, and the inferni um, who shape fire. I mean, just, I love that. I just think that's a really cool opportunity for an artist, you know? Yeah. To take a sentence and then create it. Mm-hmm. Um, reminds me of Colarp, who does incredible art like that um, for the Grishaverse. And this was just a really cool opportunity to see some more just, I mean, what we've envisioned actually put onto the, a page. And I just, I loved it, especially when it, the last page of that where it just says, we call them witches, but they call themselves Grisha. I love that image of a Grisha that's got, like, fire, and then there's, like, smoke and clouds behind them, and there's wind. Bl- it's just, it's beautiful. I think it's really neat. So, um, And it's just red and black. Yes, it is. It is just red and black. And then it's like we enter Oz, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden we've got color. <laughs> yeah. And... It's interesting because they're going from the, pers- like, they start off with, you know, a fear in family that death, like, I mean, the son even says, I want to be a witch hunter. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you do in Fjorda. Yep. And what I love is that they tied this family. I don't know if anybody else realized that, but that family actually is the village at the end that gets burned down. Yeah. Yeah, which is really cool because then... <laughs> Yeah, it's really cool that this kid got burned down. I know. Well, <laughs> they wanted to be Driscella. Yeah. Um, but then, oh my gosh, we get to see my favorite, because his name is Eric now. <laughs> and yes, I love it. Um, we get to meet the Darkling and Bagra, otherwise known as Eric and Lena. And Bagra is like hot. Gorgeous in these oh. illustrations. Yes, beautiful. Um, and we learned from Lee that, like, Bagra is just, like, this hot person that can do, like, whatever she wants. And clearly, she's yeah. got the looks for it. She does. And I I think it's an incredible story. I love how this story is just, like, it, it's so neat because they – so, one, the audiobook, and I mentioned this in the interview, is, like – so if you have not read this or you're or you've only read it and you haven't listened to the audiobook, I definitely suggest get the audiobook. It is definitely worth it because one, Ben Barnes is part of it, but there's a whole cast that plays each character. And this audiobook is not like a typical audiobook. It has sound effects and like it really is incredible. And if there's every single part that Ben Barnes reads he's like a narrator and it like fills in the gaps of this graphic novel where there are no words where no one's saying anything he fills in those gaps so it's like it's really neat and lee told us which i'm glad she confirmed which all those little parts that he was reading were from the original um but story Mm -hmm. and it's just it's a really neat thing to do and it's it's an hour long but it's really cool. It's so it's really easy just to sit on your couch, grab the book, listen to that at the same time, and it really gives you a lot. It's just really entertaining. I love it. So, just letting y'all know that. Yeah. Um, but yes, Bagra is hot. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Bagra is hot. <laughs> and I think that Eric is like a very kind like endearing sweet boy at this like i don't see any like hate like you know i don't it's there's not a lot of darkling in him yet right yeah very yeah it's kind of like pre it's so pre yeah pre pre darkling madness it is because it's like it's almost and it's so refreshing because this gives us this backstory of him that really helps explain, I think, w- why he did the things he did all the way through yeah. when we learn. Mm-hmm. When, and it's just really neat. So Lena's hot. Um, I love how sweet and charming Eric is. And I love that 
I think that their like relationship is really sweet. Um, I think it's, I don't know. I just don't find it like too, I don't find it, I think as harsh as other people do. I think she's just trying to help teach him lessons. Um, well, I mean, for somebody that is who they are, as far as like Bagra, like what she's lived through, what she's gone through, like she's not going to be a typical loving, like right. mom. Like she's been through a lot and seen a lot. <laughs> and then like, so she's already hardened. Right. And then now she's got this son who she has to look after who she knows is going to have a hard time. And what I love about that is though, it's not, she, she cares for, she loves him. Like, I mean, and you know that because she, she will do anything for him to keep him safe. And I think that's, you know, that's some of the most beautiful love that you can even have from somebody. She's not cruel. No, I don't think she's cruel. Exactly. Um, I do think it's interesting that the in the art in the very beginning they're talking about who his father is mm-hmm. and Bagger doesn't say much but that they've got these images of a stag which I think is kind of neat yeah kind of foreshadowing just, exactly yep um, and we did ask Lee because um, I really wanted to know who who was Eric's dad and. Pretty much, she didn't divulge a specific person or anything. However, I do hope that she lets us know. <laughs> like, maybe writes a Bagra story, um, which... Bagra, the, Bagra may not even know, though. You're right. Bagra probably doesn't know, because she is really hot. hmm Yeah. So, it's, it's beautifully done. Um, and it's really... It's really sweet. I I think what's interesting is that they we get to zoom in on some of these parts of the story that we didn't in the regular novel. I mean, not novel. Sorry, I keep calling it that in my head. But the novella is that yeah. what we'd call it? Yeah. So, um, but they are traveling at like right on in the borderlands of Fjorda, which I think is very interesting. And this is like pre way pre Grisha in Ravka. So mm-hmm. like they they have to take a lot of precautions. Um Grisha do in general. They have to pretty much live on their own and move if it, anybody discovers them because they would want to kill them. Um however we've got Eric and Lena here who even within the Grisha themselves have to protect themselves. Mm-hmm. Because Grisha want to kill them. Which I loved our conversation that we had with Lee about the amplifier power. Yeah. And I just thought it was incredible. Especially learning about the cut. Because that's something I don't think, I don't know if anybody knew. But I didn't. Did you know that anybody could do the cut if they mastered it? Like, I thought that was, because the only people we know that can do it are... Bagra and the Darkling. And then Alina was able to tap into that. Yeah, I, because I knew that was in our list of questions, I went and researched it a little bit. And the only thing that I could find was it said that it was performed by Shadow Grisha. Yep. Um, And so when she said that, like that, I was like, oh, well, maybe but, somebody should inform the internet. Well, I think that's just really cool because if I... It's no one's really known. It just has to be like it's just a very, very powerful yep. thing that like only people that are at a certain level can accomplish. Exactly. And I just thought that was the most amazing thing. Like just because, I mean, she told us mm-hmm. and we know. <laughs> and now everyone knows. If you listen to this podcast. Mm-hmm. So, yes, it's um, I think that's really neat. Um, so yeah, we learned like in Shadow and Bone and like the the first trilogy, like we learned some of the history in there about how dangerous it was um a long time ago and how different it is now for like those 
in Rafka that they actually have a place to train and to live and everything. Um, but they did talk about how it wasn't always that way. Right. And so we're seeing that now. And we we get snippets of it because, I mean, if you travel pretty much, I think, outside of Ravka, mm-hmm. um, it's, you know, I mean, definitely Fjordo. We, we oh, see yeah. that a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am... Um, some of my favorite parts of this book, like, happen in the beginning, um, especially when the Ula, the Ul, the Ula, Ul, I can't remember, um, and me, me, when Bagra and the Darkling meet up with the Ula, the head yeah. Grisha, and there's the image that when, because Bagra is fierce in this. I am sorry. There is no other word for it. Yeah. She is just fierce. And she is not here to play. Mm-mm. And one, they already are, they're being, like, they look down on her because she's a woman, which made me sick. But, of course. <laughs> um, and I love that she demonstrates in the very beginning her using the cut um, just to, you know, let them know that she's got something. But the image that I believe it's on page 33, there's an image of the Ul, Ula, who is a squalor, and Lena, who obviously we know it is, she's a shadow summoner. Mm-hmm. That image of them just standing and she's got her powers and he's got his. Oh my gosh. I like really want to get that framed. It's yeah, beautiful. It is. It is really cool. It's beautiful. And another thing that I I love that we're being able to see now is actually, like, imagery of the shadow summoner magic. Mm -hmm. Or, sorry, small science. Yeah. It's just really neat to see. Um, And I... This artist, I think, did an incredible job because, you know, it's darkness, so everybody thinks of black. But she did an incredible job with doing twists of black and gray and charcoal and all these different colors. It just, it really helps us have some really cool imagery. Yeah. So, um, and yet again, the audiobook, when you hear her, when you hear the actual, like, um, cut being done, it's, it's pretty neat. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> so, you got to hear Pretty it. neat. Oh, no, it's pretty neat. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, and I bet this is, re- like, I, d- I, we forgot to ask her how hard this was to write. Like, I mean, what it was like to write, because she added new parts to this, and, but she wasn't writing a typical, she right. Wa- she had to write new parts. And yeah. Just to write someone's, you know, talk bubble. Yeah, you're just text kind bubble. of writing, um, dialogue, basically. Like, you're not writing an explanation you're not giving descriptive words like you do in a novel you're basically just providing the dialogue you're right but you know what i just realized is i forgot because there is the parts where ben barnes reads Mm -hmm. and he in the audio book but in the yeah so i bet that's what she did she wrote it like that the new segment parts and they just took out the text spots Mm. i yeah i know my brain. I was sitting there thinking how hard it would be just to like have to like figure out what the everybody, you know, only to write all the text boxes. How different that would be for someone that writes novels, you know, when they're used to like writing, like explaining everything. But I bet what she did is she wrote the extra parts as they were and then just took out the text spots. Well, and Demon in the Woods already been written as like a full like story. Yes. So. Exactly, but there are like there are yeah. whole new segments. And um, by the way, do you think Eric's cute? Because I do. I mean, he's a he's a good looking young man. I know. I don't know how old he's. How old he's supposed to be in this? Do we? I know? don't think we know. Um, I really don't. But I do love like the small detail of him having like gray eyes Mm -hmm. i love that um and then there's something i wanted to get your opinion on um i am going to there's a okay so it's on page 49 (laughs) and 
<laughs> Just to be specific. <laughs> Am I skipping? No. Oh, okay. Um, they, in, they, the artist actually shows a ring mm-hmm. that is on Bagra's finger. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you look at that ring, doesn't that look like very similar to the ring that the Darkling has in the show that Ben Barnes wears? It doesn't have the thing that, like, on the end of it that's like a little blade. No. But I th- that's all it's missing, I feel. To me, it looks exactly like it. Because I, I did look. <laughs> of course she did. I know. I'm just that big of a dork. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Maybe I am just in my head and I am enjoying this, but I think that that is the same ring. I think it's a little but Easter egg. But he would have had to have added a, a knife. Like a hooky a part needle. on it. Yeah, which is totally possible, you know. I mean, hey. A hooky part could be added to a ring. I guess. Hey, I'm just going to live in my fancy world. <laughs> I love it. So, um, yeah, and I think it's, re- like, it's really cool just to see our, like, our story become a graphic novel. Um, it's just so different. It was very different to read, too. Because um, when I first, it's just, there's so much. Um, and then, you know... All the, all the artistry, um, and then we've got our lovely, like you know, characters like Sylvie and Annika, <laughs> slutty Sylvie, slutty Sylvie. Yeah. Okay, so that was part of my costume for last week. Yeah, yeah I was slutty Sylvie. Said it even too Lee. <laughs> I um, God, probably traumatized her. I didn't mean for Sylvie to be that slutty. Um, but it just turned into it. But it's you, so. It is. <laughs> I can't help it. Yeah. I can't help but be a slut. <laughs> God. <laughs> I hope your kid just heard that. I hope. Uh, so, uh, I am. Um, everything is, I think, the change of the story isn't, like, it's when it's more about the amplifier that kind of gets changed, but also there's this whole. It's like she adds a part in it where, so they, the village learns about a bear that's going around, mm-hmm. um, and that it's being like it's a supposed amplifier, um, and I guess everybody wants to go kill it and get it. Well, yeah. And I do love that Lena mentions how, like, how silly and how stupid, like, they all think this is going to, like, be so helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, But Sylvie, not Sylvie, sorry, Annika, who's the older sister, wants to get this bear. And, I mean, she wants to go try to kill it on her own, which. (laughs) It's kind of our first glimpse of her being greedy. Yes. And so that is, that's something that I do not believe was in the original. Um, the entire, like the, the, the bear. Am, am I, like, I don't remember the bear, honestly. I don't think it was because that is a whole, that's the added plot that she kind of added in here was that it gives, it gives Annika a reason to go and try to find an amplifier where in the original Annika just discovers by touching his hand that he is an amplifier. Um, but doesn't, there's no like backstory on Annika wanting it because she needs it for her family to protect herself. Um, so just letting y'all know. Um, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was yeah. I was trying to I was thinking about the um the story. It's because her powers aren't great, right? Like yeah. like she's not as good as the other kids. Yeah. And so like she hasn't exactly. It's kind of like um you know, you've got a Alina had her powers but she didn't know, so she was kind of sickly. Um, and she wanted an amplifier. 
Right. But yeah, it's... She had to get training done to be able to learn how to use it. And... Yeah, it's because... And they... Her privilege. She does it like it's... I think... They do touch on that, too, when, like, she's trying to, like, uh, get back at... What's his name? Lev. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see where she, like, barely does anything. Yeah. And she hasn't had the proper training because probably, like, I mean, you know, the Lev is the Ul's son, so he's the head of the their little Grisha village. So, yeah. and he's a man, so he's gotten all the proper training that he's needed. Um, so that gives us a little backstory too about how Grisha used to they keep together, but also they definitely like. I mean, it was divided between like men were the ones that sought b- being more powerful, and the women were, I bet, kind of left with scraps. And in Annika's case, their their mother dies, I think. That's right. Their mother died in like um by Druskella and she feels that her father hasn't done enough for her and Sylvie. And she's scared that they're gonna be like I mean, it's a harsh world that they're living in right now and they, you have to protect yourselves, and she has this fear that she's gonna get kicked out, that their family's gonna get kicked out. Because if they're not useful to the Grisha, Grisha village, then she's gonna get kicked out. So that's why I think she wants this amplifier. Um, and also, I mean, it's just kind of she wants to know how to get better, but she doesn't have the proper training or know any of that. I don't think it's being shared. This is all in my head. I don't know. You know, I I'm just ahead here. Yep. Just hanging out. Just ahead. Yep. Um, so, it's neat. I'm trying to, like, I am literally going through it um, page by page on my laptop. <laughs> um, I do love that they talk about the cut a little bit, um, and it's kind of like a memory in Eric's head that Lena... I guess goes and like starts she's training him and I guess tries to train him on using the cut and she when she does it she flattens an entire forest yeah and then when Eric does it he like scrapes a tree Mm -hmm. so it's pretty interesting um just very visual um and I think it's neat because, like, the imagery they have for the cut is from the show. Like, you know, how we finally, like, it's... I never imagined that the cut was something you could see when I read about it. Mm -hmm. And before the show, it just seemed like some kind of power that was, you know, didn't have... It wasn't tangible or anything. But then the show brought it, and it was like this black knife. Boomerang-looking thing. Yep. And they did it in this, and I think that's brilliant. Yeah, it has it has that same shape to it. Yes, mm-hmm. but I love the imagery. Like here, I think they've done even better than the show had so far. I think, um, just because the I don't know, it just it, I saw a lot more in it. I don't know, um, and also I don't. Do we see the cut? I know we see the cut in the show, obviously, because we saw it. When the Darkling, I have that one scene in my head (laughs) from when he's still trying to get Alina to Ravka and, like, saves her. Mm -hmm. Um, But is the cut used again in that season? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when he tries to kill Kaz. Yes, you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So, the... Added part also is, like, you know, she wants to get her bear. So she decides, hey, she knows a shadow summoner now who everybody seems to be scared of um, because it's weird. But she thinks she's going to go get her bear because her plan is that he can blind the bear so she can kill it. But as they go to go on their bear hunt, um, they discover Sylvie's hat. Yeah. And there's blood around it. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, no. What happened? (laughs) So, of course, they got to go find slutty Sylvie. And where is she? 
Oh, she is partying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's you, she can party. She sure is. She's partying. She's enjoying it. Yep. She's hanging out in an Okazatia village. Yeah. Which we learn also they caught the bear. So, yeah. Annika ain't happy because it's a waste. Um, Which makes me think, I wonder, like, so this bear, um, if it's an amplifier, if it really is, that makes me think about, like, how, how did, like, what animals are, like, I mean, they're not just created then. Like, I mean, they're just, like, a part of the world. Because when we learn about in the Grishaverse, I think, maybe, my first thought is just when we learn about the Darkling's heritage and how um, Ilya Mortsova created the amplifiers Mm -hmm. that were animals. So, in this case, you know, it's just this bear roaming around. A (laughs) wound. So maybe... But also, we don't even know if it is an amplifier, to be honest. It could be just a rumor. So... But yeah, to... Like, how many amplifiers are there out there? And then, like, when it gets killed by a non grisha Yeah, what happened? Then it's just an animal. Ooh. But, like, do those powers go somewhere? Ooh, I, huh. won- I wonder if, like, whoever, like, so if they probably, they killed the bear. Um, and what would you use a bear for? I mean... To eat parts of yeah. it, right? So maybe, um, maybe they get a good buzz. <laughs> <laughs> it would be funny if, like a like a regular person, went to go like kill it, and then as they were like chopping it up and stuff, they discovered that they were Grisha <laughs> because they like touched it. Yeah, um. <laughs> like all of a sudden they're like woof, and like they're like, oh no. What? And then they have to like be quiet because everybody's what? Okay, that's a whole nother thing in my head. Never mind. <laughs> I just created a whole story. Girl, it happens. <laughs> Welcome to my brain. I am so glad you're there. That's wonderful. Hi. Hello. <laughs> that's neat. So, um, they find her. Yeah. Let's and they drag her out of there. She just wants to stay. She doesn't understand. She's like. I don't know. Come Five. on, guys. Hey, y'all. Oh, my God. <laughs> what are you doing? Let's go. Yeah. So, and this is probably, I think, what is so interesting about this new graphic novel is because when they are walking her home, um, this is where it, to me, it it definitely is different um, because she, okay, so Annika discovers He's an amplifier, but a little differently. Um, he's discover- she discovers it still by the touch of his hand. Mm-hmm. However, the reason behind it is different because little slutty Sylvie's just f- fallen off the mountain. Yeah. So she's trying to save her sister, and then she almost falls off the mountain, and Eric, who has had multiple times to touch her hand and has not, because he remembers what his mother's told him not to. Mm-hmm. But she, he grabs her hand. And I think this is so cool. Because she saves her sister. Um, because she is... She's a squalor. Mm-hmm. And this tr- ice tree is created. That all of a sudden, you know, Sylvie's just hanging up in. Yeah. So, am I stupid an idiot here but how would a squalor be able to create an ice tree like i mean isn't that wouldn't that be more of like a tide maker thing well she so she's like i'm gonna shore up the snow okay okay so it's it's so she was trying to she knew that Sylvia, Sylvia, (laughs) she knew that Sylvie was in trouble and she was like, don't move. I'm going to try to shore up the snow. So I think she was already in that like action of like, I'm going to make everything even. Okay. And then so Eric touching her kind of like, instead of like making it even and shored up, it just explodes. Yeah. It explodes like lightning. 
and turns into an ice tree. I mean, it's like, I don't know if it's a, it's really like a tree. It's just yeah, instead of. It just looks like it. Yeah. Instead of it like shoring everything up, it just like, it just looks like a giant like. I get what you're saying. Lightning bolt. Yeah. Because I mean, she's a squalor, so it's. It's powerful wind Mm -hmm. and air, and powerful air would push snow. Okay. You know what? And I get it now. See, this is another reason that we have this podcast. Um, (laughs) So I can understand what I am obsessed with. I mean, like, talk through things. We do. Um, Because I totally get it now. Um, And I see it in that visual, um, looking at what I thought was it. God, Lee must have thought I was crazy when I was like, it's a tree. (laughs) <laughs> it's an ice tree it's an ice tree yeah um so and what is really sad i think in this is that you know eric is so kind and sweet and all he wants is a friend yeah like that's all he wants mm-hmm. is somebody besides his dang mom to talk to and annika Really seems like I think she wants to be his friend, but you know. Well, she's. But she's faking it. I know, and that's what's so sad. And he doesn't know that, so he's like, "Maybe I have a friend." You know, I don't know if it's so much faking it. I think it's more ha- like. The more I think about this story, the more I realize it's a, like as I said, a really cruel world right now. Everybody is, it's Game of Thrones. Everybody is out to protect themselves. And I think she was becoming his friend. One, it was a nice to have a friend, but hey, she had a reason. She had a use for him. Hey, she was going to try to get, kill the bear. So the shadow magic could help. So maybe she also was like, you know, he could help protect us because he's more powerful. The His mom's more powerful. But then... When she discovers that he's an amplifier and she's lost her chance at the other amplifier, she's like, I'll just kill my new friend. I mean, she's definitely faking it because she's like, because she, she wants, she needs to use him for right. her own thing. So she's not like genuine. befriending him for a genuine purpose. Like she's, yeah. she's, she's very much faking this. Yeah. And, and I'm not saying she's not, it, I just like, I guess maybe trying to figure out how to say it. I guess it's just maybe her intentions are definitely like, I mean, yeah, she's using him, but I think it's also kind of like, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to stop because I don't think I can figure out the words to explain it. I'm going to sound crazy sitting here like trying to. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's sad because um, especially if you look at the visuals, um, she, I mean, right when she finds out She's got this sly eye looking at Eric. Mm -hmm. And Eric feels bad that he's told her. um, But she, of course, is like, oh, no, I won't tell a single soul. I'll be fine. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Um, However, I think it's very interesting that when they get back to the village, um, you know, Sylvie's just spilling all the tea to everybody. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God, look at the powers. But and Lena is there. She doesn't say a single word, but there is an image of her on page 142 just staring back at Eric. Yeah. Like. Like side eye. Like she knows what's going on. And I think I find that incredible. It just shows how powerful she is. Like, I mean, she's just so cool. Well, I think that she just. She knows. She's she's lived a long life and she knows how things work and she knows. Yeah. So. Just from experience. Yeah, and it's, so, I'm not going to skip to it, because I don't want to skip through all this stuff, but they still have their meal of turnips and whatever, and discuss favorite colors, and um, the kids, you know, they're at the kids' table. Um, Little Darkling, Sylvie and Annika, they're just discussing and start talking about candies and the favorite things, and he's never thought about what his favorite food is. Um... But, um, yeah, our Annika decides, like, oh, Eric, you know what? I want to go, like, skinny dipping tonight. (laughs) Maybe you should come with me. (laughs) Will you? And he's like, I don't think so, but what time are you going? 
And literally, I think he, he says, what time? And so then we go to our purple scenes that you were talking mm-hmm. about. It's nighttime, and Eric sneaks out. And, yep, he goes. And this is some of the most beautiful art I think I've seen um, in this graphic novel is when we get to, when he gets to, you know, the skinny dipping and he gets to the lake that it, well, it's not a lake. I'm sorry. It's a hot springs. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she is just laying in the water and it's so pretty. And she, um, yeah. And this goes definitely dark. Um, however, this was really cool. I listened to this actually before we recorded this again because I wanted the end part is really cool to listen to the audiobook and read and what and read this and watch at the same time because it's just the action is really cool. Um, but as we know, you know, she wants the amplifier, so she seduces him, and then she gets up on the rock, and he feels cold, mm-hmm. and oops, she's. She freezes him. Yep, she freezes him into place. He's like a darkling popsicle. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, I remember when I first read this, I didn't, like, see that coming. I had no clue what the hell she was doing. Did you? No, I think Sylvie, not Sylvie, I think Annika's mm-hmm. character is written to where you think mm-hmm. that... Um, because we don't have the bear the f- in the other story. So, like, right. we don't know motive in the original story. So, Annika's character is written to where you think they're going to be friends and that she's... Because we don't have these visuals. We yeah. don't have her motive. Like, it's it's easier to tell in this because you can see the side glances. You can see kind of, like, the look on her face and the whole yeah. bear situation. So, it's easier to tell in here. But in the original story... You think, okay, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. And then no. So it's. I think it's more of a surprise in the original story. It is, because we don't even get to, like, hear. You get to see them really get to know each other better. And in the short story, I mean, it goes straight from, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's just a lot that's missing. Um, cut out the entire bear and all, yeah. So it is a surprise. And yeah, so obviously she like froze him and she's going to like whack him with a rock so that she can use him as her own personal amplifier. But Mr. Lev comes in and ruins everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the, and she doesn't want Lev to know. She's like, I, I'm just what? Nothing. And then. So Eric, to try to, like, stop everything, starts screaming, I'm an amplifier. So brilliant. Which is smart. Like, it's... Yeah. So, because he knows that they're going to start fighting, and that's going to um, give him some time. And she does get a good whack in. Oh, yeah. She She, definitely gets a good whack in. She definitely, like, cracks his skull open. Like, (laughs) jeez. he can't think well for a second. I mean, she definitely, yeah. I mean, all that anger, yeah. She, and then it's, it's so it just creates this huge fight. It's like Annika and Lev and Eric, and they're just like fighting in the water, which is another like cool visual. It's neat to see like all the little images that we see here. Yeah, because I mean, we've got straight pages of like no dialogue, just these like really cool. Um, images look of at, the fight. <laughs> look at the one where it's um, it's looking up at his legs underneath the ice. Yeah, like yeah. How cool is that? Because you mm-hmm. can see Lev and Annika above the ice, and in the audiobook, it's talking about how like Ben Barnes is reading how Eric is grabbing his knee, trying to crush through the ice. It's just. It's really cool. So, and then, yeah, we... So he he pretty much basically, like, he thinks he's going to drown because he's being held underwater, and he cuts to this, like, scene of his mom 
mm-hmm. and like of his mom being like, as long as your heart beats, you keep fighting. And so he's basically like willing himself to fight through this. And it's so he name. uses the cut. Like you can see the cut yeah. uh, on like page 178. You can see just like the top part. It's, well, it's huge. Like, I mean, like it's a- Of like the cut, but you don't know what he's cut. He doesn't even know what he did. No. Um, and then like Lev and Annika, I guess, have just like killed each other. <laughs> well, no, the cut. Yeah, it's the cut. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it looks like they've had this huge fight like on page like 179. Oh, yeah. Like it looks, they're just like laying there, but like you can see like the shadows coming up from their wounds, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. It is. Um, Lev is, he's cut in half. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like the little shadows like coming up. Um, Annika got like, I think she got. Her throat. Yeah, that's got to hurt. But she, like, I mean, compared to Lev. Yeah. She didn't get basically cut in a half. Right. <laughs> um, but then they, but then we see him like doing another cut. And that's it. And then it like goes back to the village and he's telling this tall tale. <laughs> like, we were attacked. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> there were soldiers and <laughs> we were attacked. <laughs> the Okazatya. Yeah, those those things, those horrible people. Um but like you can see that mom truly doesn't buy it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> she's got her arms crossed and she's like, mm mm, no. Yeah. And the second um Ule walks away, she's like, see, this is where you can tell that she isn't like the worst. That's right. Th- exactly. Mom ever. Cause she's like, You're you're fine, you're good, you survived. Yeah. There's nothing to apologize for. Yeah. And I think to it's to save herself, but also to save him too. Yeah. She packs them up. Well, exactly. I mean, if she didn't want care for him, I mean, she could easily just not care for him and just let him die and yeah. just leave him. I mean, she cares. Or she could have like yelled at him at least or something, but she didn't. She was just like, it's fine. Well, because she's also she's teaching him like mm-hmm. their most fundamental lesson, which is you know, you have got to stay alive. You're very powerful, but we are different, but we are also very strong, but you have to like, number one thing is we've got to stick together and help each other. Like, I mean, survival is the most important thing. Well, yeah. And then what's funny is that she places all the blame on Yuli where she's like, this is all your fault because you promised us safety and you couldn't. So this is all your fault. Um, but again, we see her caring, caring for him because he's like, do I smell smoke? Mm. And they see the village up in flames. And she says, I would burn a thousand villages, sacrifice a thousand lives to keep you safe. That's not the words of an uncaring nope. mother. That's exactly. It's very kind. I mean, it's harsh, but it's I mean, the world. I <laughs> like, I mean, it's love still. Yeah. Um, it's a different type of love, but, and I love that, um, she's very impressed with him Uh huh. because I mean, one, he was able to use the cut, but also his quick thinking on, he needed to figure out a way to somebody to blame. Yeah. And so he used, so using the cut on himself. Yeah, he, like, almost severed his leg. Yep. But he did that because it, if these two other people were, like, cut open and mm-hmm. he came back unscathed, that's real sus. Exactly. They'd be gone. They'd be killed. Yeah. So he was like, I'll just kind of cut open my leg and make it look good. Yep. <laughs> Which is, it is smart. Yeah. Because, like, if you just Quick came thinking. walking back, you're just like, do, 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 Yeah, there were... There was an attack. They'd be like, why didn't they attack you? Uh. <laughs> right. It's quick thinking. And yeah. I think what, and we're at the very end, mm-hmm. and it's just the very last page is beautiful. 
but it also is where it gives the entire reason, I think. Like, I mean, it gives me this sentence, the the last line. Yeah. It, it tells us everything about why his reasoning behind everything we have ever read him do. Mm-hmm. And what is that, Terry? Well, mom is saying there's no safe place for us. Like, there will never be a safe place. And he says, I will make one. Yep. And we have this visual of, like, Grisha in there. Keftas and their different colors and surrounded by his shadows. And so, yeah, Ugh. we get the backstory like we we heard. Yeah. Like from him. And then I also noticed like he's got the ring on now. Told you. In that one. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't like I went to go look it up and it's not really. But anyway. <laughs> um, I told you it was in my head. I was just enjoying it. <laughs> but yeah, like. Anyway, that's it. Yeah, it's it's very in-depth. I think it's really cool because it just, to me, you know, I mean, that is his entire reason for, he just, he wants the Grisha to have a place to live and be safe. And he did that. We don't know all of it, but I mean, yeah. he does do that. And to protect that. Yeah, and we talked about um, how he always meant well. Exactly. I mean, he's his reasoning. And this is where it came from. Exactly. Yeah, it did. So yep. that's it. That was it. Ooh, fine. Okay. Well, it's that very special time for Grisha Cast News. <laughs> well. It is now that special time for our friend that we haven't seen in so long. It's our Grisha in the field. Woo! Alex! Alex! Hey! Hello, hello! How I've missed you all so much. It's been a minute. It has. It has been. We have missed you so much. A lot of changes have happened, and that is why I have not been here. Well... We are so glad you're back. How are things good? Things doing okay? Things are great. I got engaged. Woo! I moved. I got a kitten. Aww. What's yeah. the kitten's name? Luna. Oh, Luna. Luna. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, oh, Luna. Oh, Luna. That's fantastic. <laughs> and you look phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Looking at that beautiful kefta you got on. Whew, sporting it. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you get your hat yet? Oh, wait, you've had your hat. I do have my hat. It is in the other room at the moment. Yeah, and you wouldn't be able to wear it with your headphones. So Unfortunately. It does make it complicated. <laughs> but um, so, since you're back, I'm sure you've got some special information for us. I do, and last week we did have Lee, so she did spill a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She is doing a Hellbent tour in the United States. Tickets are already on sale for that, but she also revealed that she's going to be touring in the United Kingdom, and that will be shortly after the United States dates, so make sure you check that out. That is awesome. It's going to be... I I know she's really excited about that because I remember last time when we spoke to her that she couldn't handle that she couldn't do a book tour for Rule of Wolves and Lives of Saints. So I know she's ready to get out there. That's awesome. Yes. And some more hellbent news. There is a pre-order gift with this book. If you send your receipt through email, I can't remember the email off the top of my head, so you'd have to check her Instagram. You will get a free print. It has gold foiling on it. It is stunning. Yes. And... Just letting y'all know, it's actually really easy to do. I've already done it, and yes. you just have to. She's got it on a lot of her different feeds. You just click on the link and fill out that info. And I love that they do that. That they tend to do that for. I feel like every single Grisha verse book that they put out, there's some kind of special thing that if you pre-order, love it. So it's great. I got mine for Rule of Wolves, and I'm absolutely in love of it with it. Oh, yeah, was that, I can't, is that the beautiful photo that is yeah, in the picture? Yeah, the um, fan art. Yes, that is, yeah, mine's framed. In the, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, 
Hellbent is so exciting. I can't. We can't wait for that. Ugh. So what else you I got? I do have casting announcements. Ooh. So IMDb only had one update since I last checked, and that is Rachel Redford playing Fruzy. I think that's an original character, more of a background character, but it is a new listing. Hmm. Okay. So is that There's, the... Oh, I'm sorry. You finish. You're okay. You can keep going. <laughs> I was going to say, is that... So IMDb, like, do they have the other characters, like, always been updated with that? Like, I don't know. I don't, don't pay attention. Yes. To okay. So... Hmm. So we've... Got- I try to check IMDb weekly to see if they update any cast. Cast has to be updated by official staff, but pictures could be uploaded by anyone, if I'm correct. Okay. Hey, look at that. Some info. That's and a- then I have six, three more, no, five more. Words are hard. And numbers are harder. <laughs> numbers. Um, five more cast announcements. Who do we- I cannot remember the website that these are from, but they were all over Instagram. And I am confident that these are true. We have Tommy Roger playing Jordy Reitveld, so Cass's brother. Mm-hmm. That means we're getting the Cass backstory. Mm-hmm. We're getting Rhoda Ofri Atta as Aditi Healy, which is Jasper's mother. Mm-hmm. So we're getting his backstory. Cute. We have Ali Star. His last name starts with the N, and I don't want to offend anybody by trying to even pronounce that. But he is playing Adric Sabine. With, who is Nadia's brother? Mm-hmm. Wow. And to me, funny Kayod, I believe her name is playing a character named Maradi. That is an original character, and Seamus O'Hara is playing Hal Solv, which is another original character. Oh my gosh! You know what? I just realized. Um, is it Maradi? M A R A D I. Is that the character name? By chance? Yeah. M-I-R-A-D-I. Okay. So from the interview that we did with Lee last week, she told us that season two has a lot of lore from the lives of saints. Um, Sancta Meridi is like the one she's, I remember the story. It's the um, Novia Zem story and she helps the lovers from, yeah. So I bet that's who that is. (gasps) Exciting! Oh, <laughs> yes, it is. I love. Oh my gosh, that is really cool. We actually are gonna have like a s- person that's a sancta. From that's so neat. Interesting. Oh, uh, that just got me even more excited for this. <laughs> I know, right? And that makes so much sense since they also casted his mother who dies. And oh wow, okay. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool that we got to, like, mix in our tea with it, too, you know, from the interview. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's a lot of that tea. Yeah. She was, spilled a lot of tea. She did. Ah, yeah. yeah. Oh. I was baffled. <laughs> I know. But it's still... I just kept screaming. It was nonstop. It be fangirling <laughs> over the entire episode. I feel you. And I had to go back and listen, even though I was here, because I couldn't even remember what happened. Um, but... Yeah, I'm so excited for season two. And she mm-hmm. didn't spill so much, but still the fact that, like, I'm so excited that the writers have, like, included things like that. Like, Lives of Saints, what a cool thing for them to do. Like, that's amazing. And Right? Ooh, cool. What was I the first character you said? Uh, the first character um, the out one, of the original? So the first one was IMDb. There's, like, a another one that we thought was an original character. Fruzy. Okay. F-R-U-Z-I. Yeah, no. It doesn't ring a bell. It doesn't. Okay, I'll stop talking. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I do have one more piece of news. And that it is a Demon in the Wood graphic novel is up for a Goodreads Choice Award. That means we have to vote in order to get it at the number one spot. That. That just got released, too, and that Mm -hmm. is incredible. I know, like, I'm excited for Lee for that, and I know she's really excited. That's really cool. So we all need to go out there and vote. Where can you vote for that? I believe that the Goodreads homepage will have a link for it, 
I believe there's also going to be a website that's like goodreadschoice.com. I didn't have a chance to do too much research into that today, but it's also more than likely in Lee's bio on Instagram. I bet you are right. So everybody go out there. We uh, go out there, get on your phone, <laughs> get on your laptops. We all got to vote. Let's do it. Let's put that up at number. She'll be, yeah, she deserves it. It's such a good, it's so amazing. I think it's an incredible thing. And also really cool that they are up for that. So yay. Woohoo. By the way, I'm trying not to move my head a lot. I hope I'm doing well. <laughs> I know. Our poor listeners have no clue what I'm talking about. Anyways. Well, that is a lot of news that we, because we haven't seen you in so long, so I'm so glad we're starting to get more stuff Yay! now. I feel like when I'm in the field, I just scoop a bunch of things up and hold <laughs> on to it. But it all happens in one week. I love that. And I love that you're just in that field scooping things up and just holding yeah, on to I got them. my butterfly net. We're all good. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, don't spill, like, just one thing, you know? I mean, ho- make sure you've got your butterfly net full. And that- Exactly. I love it. Well, I hope that you keep finding butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> or jellyfish. Ooh, Ooh. I did just finish doing SpongeBob. I See? I'm pulling it together. There you go. Yeah. Well, (laughs) it has been lovely. We are so excited that, one, we've got news and we know more is going to keep coming. So um, I hate to do this, but you got to get back to that field. (laughs) I do. I do. I got to go catch dinner, too. (laughs) Well, good luck with that. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, night in the field, and I hope you stay warm. But um, we will yes. see you next time. So we love you. Love you guys too. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> well, it was so good to see Alex again. <laughs> I know. I missed Alex. <laughs> I mean, it literally feels like it's been twenty years. It well because it has kind of been. <laughs> it kind of has. has been a very long time. <laughs> and you know, I'm so horrible. Just sending Alex back to that field. But yep. you know, at least. Alex is learning how to survive. That's right. Some survival skills. So important. Mm-hmm. So um, that is our show. It has been fun. Um, we are going to take a break um, just for Thanksgiving. You know, we all got to eat some turkey or whatever. That good old American holiday. Mm-hmm. Where are we? Nope. Not going to get into that. Nope. Okay. So we will be back the following week. Um, which is de- it's the first week of December, December 2nd. Yes. And um, yeah, so anyways, you all have a lovely holiday. Um, and yeah, we'll see, you'll hear from us next time. Long live the Grishaverse. Like we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No, no mourners. mourners. No funerals. This has been GreeshCast. Connect with us on the web at GreeshCast.com. Send an email to info at GreeshCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok at GreeshCast. Woo! And thank you to our amazing staff, Chris, Michelle, Alex, and Brandon. <laughs>